Did you ever wonder what happened to the typical average American during the recession? You mean like uh, Joe the Plumber? I mean the real Joe the Plumber. Find out next on Money Track. Money Track is made possible by the Investor Protection Trust. The Investor Protection Trust is a nonprofit organization devoted to investor education. Over half of all Americans are now invested in the securities markets, making investor education and protection vitally important. Since 1993, the Investor Protection Trust has worked with states across the country to provide the independent, objective investor education needed by all Americans to make informed investment decisions. This is Money Track with Pam Kruger and Jack Gallagher. Bringing you real stories and real experts to show you what works and what doesn't work when it comes to investing your money. This is Money Track. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Money Track. I'm Pam Kruger, and this is Chloe. And I'm Jack Gallagher, and welcome to Money Track on Main Street. Versus Money Track on Wall Street. Yeah, this is good. the prettiest little town. I mean, this street could be anybody's street. It could be your street. Mm -hmm. You're going to eat that donut? Because if you're not, there's somebody next to you that wants it. This side, Pam, over here. Thank you very much. This looks like a delicious morning treat. Up oh, and look what we just happened to wind up in front of. It's a dog specialty store. How could that have happened? Who scouted this location? You know, seriously, as I look around here, I'm seeing a lot of little local businesses, and they appear to be doing really well. They do, yep. In fact, I just saw a plumbing truck drive by. And that makes me want to ask you about Joe the Plumber. You remember Joe the Plumber, John McCain's Joe the Plumber, 2008 election Joe the Plumber. Mm -hmm. This guy was supposedly the poster child for the typical middle class American. Uh, I've been put kind of into this. Uh, uh, but then the media been... got a hold of him and he became sort of a celebrity. And by the way, Joe's name is, is really Sam. Mm -hmm. um, I think he has his own publicist now and, and he's making his rounds on the lecture circuit. This could be the problem with America at this point. <laughs> We're listening to Joe the Plumber lecture us. Probably has his own makeup person. Probably has his own menu planner. Nice. But the whole idea behind Joe the Plumber was to sort of create a proxy for how the average Joe is, you know, reacting to whatever happens in the economy. And Pam and I were fascinated by this concept, so we decided to devote a show, an entire show, today's show, to exploring what happened to the real typical middle class American during what I like to call the Great Recession. Mm. So we're going to show you the good, the bad. Later on, I'm going to show you the ugly. And we're not going to talk to that celebrity Joe, a.k.a. Sam, either. Uh-uh. No. We wanted to find the real deal. The authentic really does work for himself, Joe. Exactly. Where is Joe the plumber and how's he doing? Well, sit back and relax because you're about to meet him. Thank you for this donut, by the way. So when Wall Street tightens its squeeze on credit and lending, who does that affect? That would be me. Joe the plumber. When Wall Street investors stop buying and selling, who does that affect? That would be me, Joe the plumber. When Wall Street is hit by scandal and trust issues, who does that affect? That would be me, Joe the plumber. Meet Joe Gione. That's the real Joe the plumber. Third generation plumber from South Philadelphia. I need a uh, slip 45 or a slip 90 here. You know what that is, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, out in your truck? Out in the right. truck. So I can't think of a better way to find out how Wall Street affects Main Street than finding an average Joe. Joe the plumber. Now he asked me to get this part, this elbow, I think. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I can find it. While I look for that part, let me tell you about Joe. Are you having some? He's married, two grown kids. Hi, it's Lorraine with Joe Gino Plumbing. How are you? Runs his own plumbing company. Joe's a great guy to work for. He treats all his employees with utmost respect. He has eight employees. Everybody in our area knows Joe the plumber. Hey, Joe! So what do you think about Joe? What kind of guy is he? You can't get a better man than him. I found it! Everyone I met said Joe's an upstanding South Philly guy, hardworking, decent family man with strong values. I think I found it. It's a uh, elbow, at least. Is, um, this, is that right? This this will work right here. This is the 45. 
So how does Wall Street's actions trickle down the pipe to Joe the plumber? What happens when credit tightens on Wall Street? Well, banks stop lending to each other, and to you, and to me, and to Joe. It affected the business, sure. Tight credit on Wall Street means tight credit on Main Street. Joe's customers borrow money to renovate. No borrowing, no renovating, no need for Joe. He and his wife, Rita, who's also the company's bookkeeper, wanted a loan for their own renovation. They said, you know, it's too much. You borrowed too much, and, you know, you're at your limit. So we were, you know, we were refused the loan. Years ago, when Wall Street was soaring and credit was easy, they say getting that loan would have been easier. At the shop, Joe lowered his rates, laid off one person, shut down one truck, all because tight credit on Wall Street trickled down to Joe. Is this it? That's it. Maybe my free labor will help. Get it on board. Can I get a cheesesteak now? Oh, I would love a cheesesteak. What about Wall Street's effects on Joe's everyday life? You know, if I'm in South Philly, I got to have this. I got it. You got it. You can't go back and say you didn't have a cheesesteak here. Ah, a Philly cheesesteak. When times are good, stocks go up. Companies are worth more. They pay their people more, who in turn spend more money with Joe. So when stocks fell, Joe's income fell with it. Are you cutting back on going out to eat? No? Absolutely. And that yearly family vacation? We now have to wait an additional year. And that's, uh, I think, due to the uh, Wall Street and the way the economy's been. They are still paying off last year's vacation. I had to put on a credit card because we couldn't afford it. But we really wanted to go because it was Joe's 50th birthday. When major banks on Wall Street struggle, they raise money by raising interest rates on credit cards. Joe and Rita haven't paid off their credit card balances and have seen their interest rates go up. So last year's vacation is costing them even more. We can't get the credit card bill payment down, which is hard. And finally, how does Wall Street's actions trickle down to Joe's investments? Do you worry about your 401k as you solder? Well, sometime I do. Joe's 401k and IRA are invested in the stock market but he doesn't follow it closely. When it's doing good, you look at it. When it's not, you don't worry about it. So Joe gets upset when he reads about Wall Street firms collapsing and banks failing, which in turn sends his portfolio into the dumpster. He tells me he lays some of the blame at the feet of Wall Street money managers. We're uh, in a financial uh, bind because of a few people that obviously wanted everything for themselves. Joe still believes in the market, but now has a backup. He's bought property as his new retirement investment. For real estate, it's, it's uh, the old-fashioned word, it's a piece of the rock. I think long-term, that's the only solid piece that we have as far as equity goes. So no matter how much a guy like me or Wall Street gets in his way, Joe is sticking to his priorities. Invest, save for retirement, and stay true to your values. Hey, Joe, how about a snack? Matt. Not right now, Mac. Get back to work. Oh, okay. Well, that was fun. That was. And this is a perfect spot to spend the rest of the show. Yeah, we'll just say we get comfortable here. Hey, these were a good idea. What were you rummaging around in my mother's garage? They're comfy, though. Good. You know, I like Joe. I like Joe, too. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say he is a money track viewer because he had a lot of the concepts down. You know, what Joe didn't do is mm -hmm. every bit as important as what he did do with his investments. Because back, think about it, back when the market really dropped and his 401k was threatened, right. kind of under attack, he didn't sell. You know, he didn't panic. Yeah. You know, he kind of just stayed the course and assessed his situation. You know, and I would say that our South Philly Joe the Plumber is about as authentic as it gets when it comes to finding an average Joe. And I think we got a really good sense of how Joe's adjusted through these very strange and stressful yeah. economic times. Yeah. I think he's set himself up for success. He seems really confident moving forward. And I know that confidence is a sentiment that you think is very important. Confidence in the economy and confidence in the overall market are huge. They're essential to a real recovery. And when our reporter, Matt Markovich, asked him, you know, what's in his 401k, he really doesn't know the details. Right. He just knows that he's still mostly invested in stocks, and, and he wants to trust the people who are managing that 401k. And I'm glad we got to meet the real 
Joe the plumber. Me too. Now, Pam, let's take a question from one of our viewers. Her name is Brenda. She's in a small town just like ours. However, hers is in Georgia. So what steps can I take to make it so that I'm more bulletproof to protect my 401k plan in case something like this happens again on Wall Street? Well, Brenda, I don't know exactly how old you are, but I'm going to guess that you're in the same boat as a lot of other Americans who started investing, like me, during the 80s or the 1990s. And we got used to the stock market going in one direction, up. And these last few years have really tested the whole notion that stocks are the engine of growth for retirement. But if you use long-term history as a guide, stocks have an excellent track record of rebounding and getting back on track. In fact, the stock market gives you the best returns coming out of bad times. Now, you're talking the overall stock market. Absolutely, because we're talking the big picture, not just one or two stocks. Mm -hmm. The entire U.S. market consists of all the companies that are listed and are trading on all the American exchanges, and that's the exposure. Now, Brenda, almost all 401ks now offer at least one fund that exposes you to many, many different industries and companies. And broad diversification is a built-in protection that's going to help make sure that your portfolio is bulletproof. Number two, and I can't stress this enough in this environment, the devil's in the details. Because, you know, the glory days of the U.S. stock market might be over. You know, meaning that we might have to get used to seeing stocks grow but at a slower pace. And that means that you have to take time to find other ways to save, like, for example, on what it costs you to invest, whether that's in your IRA or your 401k. Yeah, but digging up how much you're actually spending on fees, which is what we're talking about, can be very difficult. It isn't easy because they have a tendency to sort of bury it down there in the fine print. Oh, absolutely. Let's just come right out and say it. They don't want you to know how much it costs you to invest. So, you know, you have to develop a pretty frugal mentality and, and pretty much become vigilant about questioning every fee and every expense every year. Because over the years, and that's what counts, you literally give up not just thousands, but tens of thousands of dollars in unnecessary middleman fees. And number three, to bulletproof your portfolio, just get a little bit more educated mm -hmm. about the basics of investing. It'll give you tremendous confidence. And this little bit of education is not is really it doesn't cost you a thing, but I mean it's worth its weight in gold. Thanks to the times that we're living in with the internet, we mm -hmm. have incredible access to the best information that's out there, information, tutorials, all of that stuff. It's free. And all you have to do is know how to run a search engine. And exactly. we pretty much all know how to do that at this point. Everybody knows that. And Brenda, now these are three things that you can absolutely do today to bulletproof your investments and your future retirement. And we wish you luck as you go. Now, these three steps to bulletproofing your investments are right on our website. And Chloe's going to get up now and fetch us that URL. Good girl. There, in addition to these bulletproof points, are some in-depth articles a list of Pam's favorite books for learning yep. the basics of investing, one which happens to be a companion to our series. It's called The Money Track Method, and you can find it at our website, and that is moneytrack.org. Okay, now I'm really in the mood to dive into some more portfolio talk. Mm. Today, we're asking a veteran financial journalist who's been reporting on stocks, the economy, and personal finance for some 25 years. And his latest book, The Jubeck Picks, is in bookstores. Welcome guest professor for our Investing 101 this week, Jim Jubeck. Hey, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hey, Pam, Jack, and Chloe. It was really great to finally meet the real Joe the Plumber. <laughs> yes, that was exactly. nice, wasn't it? Now, Pam was just talking about paying attention to details and how important that is now more than ever. So, Jim, if you were sitting down with our Joe the Plumber, what would you say to him about all of that? This is what I'd be telling him. You've got to manage everything. You've got to look at the whole package and pay attention to everything because everything is going to count. So you've got to start worrying about, oh, managing your credit, especially if he's got his own business. You've got to make sure that... Uh, you're going to have a good supply of credit. Banks are going to be looking harder and harder. You've got to make sure that you've got a good credit rating, all that stuff. And Pam, the thing about paying attention to the details is if you're looking at, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, the details really, really matter because they compound over time. Hmm. Yeah, good point, because, you know, Joe and the rest of us, we're the ones who have to be in control of these fees right. and, and manage our credit, you know, and something else that we can't predict 
that we have to be aware of tax rates. I mean, we have to keep our eye on that ball, too, right? Yeah, Pam. I mean, I actually do have a crystal ball. Um, it doesn't work very well. That's the problem. It doesn't tell me everything I need to know. But what it does tell me is this, that going forward, Joe's really right to question everything, to question not just the returns in the market, but to question, you know, what taxes are going to be like. And so if you think about that going forward and look at all the deficits we're racking up, you got to say, hey, taxes are going to go up. And at some point, somebody in Washington is going to look at these 401ks and these tax sheltered investments and say, hey, we'd like a piece of that. So, you know, I don't think you can really trust anything that people have been telling you over the last decade to hold true for the next 10 or 20 years. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, Jim. Now let's take a call from one of our viewers in Toledo, Ohio. This is Bill. Uh, traditionally, the uh, growth in the stock market is 10 to 12 percent per year. And given current market conditions, um, I'm 42 years old, and I'm wondering if we can expect that same 10 to 12 percent growth per year in the stock market uh, by the time I retire. So, Bill, you're um, 42. What's that? The class of um, 84? Class of 1984. Wow. I would really be looking at the stock market as a way to build long-term wealth, but I wouldn't be counting on 12 percent. We were only at 12 percent during the the tech boom. We're now, after two bear markets in the last decade, you know, we're looking at about nine to 10 percent. I'd say that's a decent range to look at going forward. Well, you sound pretty optimistic overall, Jim. I have to tell you, I like that. I mean, if we're all going up in flames tomorrow, what's the point of doing anything? So you just have to assume that there is going to be a tomorrow and you just keep plugging away and compounding and time is on your side as long as you don't wind up stuck in despair. And that's what I would say to Joe and our viewers everywhere. Well, Jim Jubeck, you've been around for a very long time. We thank you for your valuable perspective, although I'm, I'm not saying if you're older than I am. I'm just saying you're wise with your experiences. How do you get yourself Did into I these get out things? Of that? <laughs> thanks, Jim. Bye now. And thanks for asking the question, Bill. Now, do you want to know more about what other experts expect from the stock market over the next few years? Well, head straight to our website. You'll know you're in the right place when you see the dog with the address. And the address is moneytrack.org. And by the way, we're funded entirely by a grant from the Investor Protection Trust. And that's why we are a .org. So, I do a little segue here. Mm -hmm. What happens when our typical middle-class Americans try to find a faster shortcut to wealth? You know, when you mix money and, and characters straight out of The Sopranos. Well, you might find that that investment is, well, garbage. What do you get when you mix suspected mobsters, a little Ponzi action, and a whole lot of trust? Trash. This was the best case I've ever worked in my entire life. Former police captain Rudy Bassman works at the Bureau of Securities at the New Jersey Attorney General's office. And what he says happened to 207 investors could happen to you. Hey, Rudy, how are you today? Morning, Jane, how you doing? Good. So we're at the counter at Michael's Diner in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. So we're talking trash. We're talking trash. There was a guy by the name of Thomas Giacomaro. He put together this company where they were going to buy up 10 mom and pop garbage companies. Those mom and pop companies were going to be bought out by a much larger waste management company. So it was presented as a mergers and acquisition investment that was already a done deal. No risk, all windfall. What makes this case juicy? is Giacomoro was a convicted felon. His name could not be on any corporate documents. But to make the plan work, he needed investors, and he got them. The biggest investor that we had in this case was a famous author, uh, Mary Higgins Clark. She lost over $20 million. But one investor got suspicious, and he spoke up. A gentleman that actually rode the back of the garbage truck invested his entire life savings, which was about $40,000. And he signed a promissory note, and when the note came due, he didn't get his money. About a week later, 
the complainant called me and told me that he had been paid back in full. The complainant not only got his initial investment, but a nice kicker on top of it. That was a, a classic Ponzi move. Hush money. And behind the scenes, something else was going on. Giacomoro, what he was doing was he was using the money as I'd like to call his own personal slush fund. We're talking a total of $105 million. Everyone that was somebody in the company, they all got Rolex watches. He loved cars, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce, Porsche. Again, all of this money was from investor money. But what goes up, especially in a scheme like this, always seems to come down. I subpoenaed uh, the corporate records. I subpoenaed the uh, bank records, speaking uh, to the investors themselves, who the majority of lost all their money. When there are mob connections, victims are always scared to talk. A uh, majority of the people uh, would not talk to me. And of course, the company collapsed and the con man lost his freedom. Giacomero was found guilty of money laundering, conspiracy to commit mail fraud, and defrauding the IRS. And for that, he got 14 years. But that doesn't give all the investors, folks who thought they were going to make it big in the garbage business, their money back. If an investor ever hears the word guaranteed, that is probably the biggest red flag for any type of investment, because there are no investments that are guaranteed. And as the old saying goes, one man's trash really was worthless. Thanks for the tip, Rudy. Anytime. Well, that stinks. Yeah, and it's not just the smell of the garbage either. All right, it's time for my favorite part of the show. We're going to have lunch. I found a little diner. It's like right, right across the street over Almost. there. Almost. But first, we're going to recap what we've learned on this show today. That's right. Yep, it's time for Money Tracks. What, what we've, we've learned. learned. Y'all ready? Yes. First, Joe the plumber is real. He exists. He's living in South Philly. Joe has to become a little bit more vigilant about what it costs to invest. He's got to pay attention to taxes that he might have to pay on his investment gains. And Joe can probably expect the stock market to grow, but more slowly between now and when he's getting ready to retire and hang up his hammer. His hammer? He's a plumber, he's not a builder. Okay, okay, his crescent wrench, his elbow fitting. Oh, the slip 45, sure. Or maybe you mean the uh, ball check valve. Is that what you were thinking of? <laughs> Show off. Anyway, we also learned that details are important, more important now than ever, and the best way to recognize which details matter most is to invest a little time in a little free education. We have plenty of resources right on our website at moneytrack.org, and none of them, not a single one, is designed to sell you anything. They are just there to teach you how to invest and protect your money. And thirdly, you saw with your own eyes that despite all the publicity surrounding big financial scams, pyramid schemes are alive and well. It's not just in Palm Beach, it can happen in the middle of New Jersey. Scam artists are still trying to find ways to separate you from your money, so please watch your back. All right, and then just one last thing. Now, if you find our approach to investing down to earth and the advice grounded in common sense, good. Because at the end of the day, that's what works when it comes to investing your money. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time, folks. OK, food, um, hamburger? Pam, I've asked you time and time again not to call me hamburger. Why do you continue to do that? You know it upsets me. You can call me anything else you want. Uncle Buns, pickles. But I told you, hamburger, no. Okay, three, two, one. You see anything you like? Well, I saw the uh, shampoos. Yeah, and I don't one, know if you what about to the shampoos? Notice that her hair is a little, it's been frizzing up a little lately. I mean, it's not a, it's not a complaint or a. a her know. hair? Yeah. She just got a, she just got washed. What are you talking about? Yeah, just, she looks all right. What do you mean? I'm, I, I don't mean anything. It's what not. Are you, a, what are you saying? Not, it's not an insult. I'm saying what, maybe. What are you saying? I'm saying she needs a conditioner. What? What? Jack? You're going to get us kicked out of here. I got to ride the pony. 
It doesn't look like a pony. It's it like kind a, of. It looked, the last pony you saw that had antlers. He looked startled. 